Hey guys, uh, we're going to do another chapter 3 video here today and we are working on solving equations. We've been working on this in class, but now we're going to work on um, how can I solve equations that have fractions in them. And those tend to be the trickier ones for a lot of people. So let's try a fractional problem. Let's do an example for our notes today. And our first example, what we're going to do is we are going to solve for x. So solve for x. So I've got some sort of mystery number, which I'm calling x. I don't know what the number is, but I know if I take x and I subtract 1 half, I end up getting 5 sevenths as an answer. So our job is to figure out, well, what's x then? What could x be? And so the strategy for solving this is kind of the same strategy we've been using um, when we solve for x in other examples. We put the line down the equal sign, and our goal is to get x isolated by itself, all alone. So what do we need to get away from the x? Well, we need to get rid of the minus a half. We need to flip the minus one half over and make it a positive plus one half. But then this is where it gets tough. This is the challenge. Now we gotta deal with fractions. Five sevenths plus a half is not easy math to do. So I kinda need some more space. I'm gonna go do that on the side over here. Five sevenths plus one half. Well, with adding and subtracting fractions, I know I need common denominators, and these are not common. So I'm gonna use that butterfly method to get my common denominators. I'm gonna use seven times two and make my common denominator 14 for both of these. And then I know that five times two is 10, and seven times one is seven, and our job is to add the fractions together. Well, now we have common denominators, so we can. 10 plus 7 is 17, so our answer is 17 fourteenths. And what I can do now is I can say, oh, okay, x equals 17 fourteenths. And if I want, this could be my answer. I could stop right there. If I felt like going a little bit farther with it, like maybe I decided to make it a mixed number, I could do that too. I know 14 fourteenths is a whole. So the 14 out of 17, there's three extra, so that'd be 3 fourteenths. So I could write my answer like this, 1 and 3 fourteenths. Either way, they're both the same, actually. So either way, you can do it. Okay, so let's try some more of these because there's different examples. So let's try another problem. Get some space here to work. Um, for this one, let's solve for w. So new example. This time we are going to solve for w. Solve for w. And here's the problem. Um, we have 2 thirds plus w equals negative 1 fifth. 2 thirds plus w, whatever w is, equals negative a fifth. Well, what are we going to do to solve for w? Well, we're going to isolate it. We're going to get it by itself. So I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to imagine getting w all by itself on the side here. And what needs to leave that w to make that happen is the 2 thirds. Right now it's a positive 2 thirds. So when I flip it over, it's going to change to a negative 2 thirds. So we're changing the sign, flipping it over to a negative. Here's the math I've now got to go do. I have to take negative 1 fifth, here I'll put it right here, negative 1 fifth, and now I've got to take away 2 thirds. So this is what I've got to figure out. I don't have common denominators kind of looks like KCC since it's takeaway. So this can be a little bit challenging. Why don't I change this to negative one-fifth plus negative two-thirds. There's my KCC. Keep, change, change. And then let's get that common denominator. So I'm going to butterfly it. I know five times three is going to give me a denominator of 15. So I'll have 15s. One times three is three, and five times two is 10. So this is what we end up getting. But remember, they're both negatives. So a negative 3 tenths, 3 fifteenths plus a negative 10 fifteenths. Same signs, add and keep. So I'm going to see an answer of negative 3 and negative 10 makes negative 13 fifteenths. So what is w equal to? Negative 13 fifteenths. And there's our solution. I would simplify it, but it's already simplified. There's not even more to do with this problem. We've got it down to its uh, com lowest denominator and numerator, so we're kind of stuck right there. So again, um, these fraction problems kind of are complicated because you have to know how to solve for your variable, but you also have to know how to get your common denominators and, and get that uh, 
combined fraction, which is a lot of steps. It's a lot of work, actually. So let's continue to practice. The more we practice, the easier these get. Let's do another example. Okay, this time we're going to solve for y. So solve for y. And here's the problem that we're going to do this time. This time we have negative 4 fifths equals y minus 1 third. Equals y minus 1 third. Solve for y. Okay, so same idea here. We're going to put the line down the equal sign. We're going to isolate y. This time it's on the right-hand side. We're going to get it all by itself. And what needs to leave our, our variable? What do we need to get rid of from that y? Well, the minus one-third. So when we take the minus one-third over, it's going to change into a positive one-third. We're going to end up adding it to the other side. So the math we need to figure out is what's negative four-fifths plus a third? So I'm going to write negative four-fifths plus one-third. Same problem as earlier. We don't have common denominators. So we're going to butterfly this thing. We're going to get our common denominator of 5 times 3, which is 15 and 15. And then on top, negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12. And 5 times 1 is 5. So we're adding this, negative 12 fifteenths plus 5 fifteenths, which is different signs. So we're going to do subtract, different signs subtract. So 12 take away 5 is going to be 7, so 7 fifteenths. And between the two of these, the bigger one is the 12 and it's negative. So we're going to have negative 7 fifteenths. So our answer for y is negative 7 fifteenths. And there it is. And it's simplified. I can't divide 7 and 15 by any number that they have in common. So we've got it down to its lowest value. So why don't you try one? See if you're getting better at these, because I know we've done some in class. This is probably not the first time you've tried some of these fraction problems. So let's see how your skills are going with some of these. So here's your you try problem. I want you to solve for x. So solve for x. And for your problem, uh, you're going to have x plus 2 fifths equals x plus 2 fifths equals negative 1 fourth. Go ahead right now, hit the pause button on your device and see if you can solve this completely by yourself first, and then unpause the video and see if you did it correctly. All right, you ready to check your answer? Did you pause the video, do it, and then unpause it? Because you want to really see if you're getting this down. It's a great way to study. So here's what you should have. A line down the middle. X is going to be isolated by itself. To isolate it, we have to take two-fifths over and make it negative two-fifths. That's going to be our strategy. That gets the two-fifths gone, and x is all alone. Now here's the tricky math. Negative one-fourth minus the two-fifths. Okay, it's KCC problem. It's uh, subtraction, so I'm going to keep change change. I'm going to keep it negative one-fourth, but make it plus negative two-fifths. And I don't see common denominators. Five and four are not common denominators, so we're going to butterfly it. We're going to go for four times five and make it 20 as our common denominator. And then let's see, one times five is five, and four times two is eight. But remember, these were both negative, so we have a negative five twentieths plus a negative eight twentieths. So two negatives, that means we have same signs add and keep. So we're going to add up five plus eight, we're going to get this uh, negative, that would be 13 twentieths. And that's our solution. That's already simplified. So negative 13 twentieths can go here. And that's what x equals. And we're done. So how did you do? Um, did you get the same answer as I did? And how are you doing at showing your work? I'm trying to be pretty organized. If you notice, I've got the line down the middle. I'm drawing the arrow. In class, I'm seeing some of you guys do this, where you draw the arrow on top. And I don't really have a problem with that, except for it's kind of confusing because you need to show this minus two-fifths. So I, I find it easier to write it underneath. The idea is, is you're starting at the top and supposed to work your way down to an answer. So if you're drawing arrows and things up above, it kind of is like you're working up instead of down. So I think it's a little easier to draw it below, just as a suggestion. I also think some of you guys are skipping like writing this. You're just kind of like, ah, it's in my head. I can see it in my head. Make sure you show it. Make sure you show your steps. You want to organize it and you want 
somebody else to be able to read your paper without talking to you and know what you were thinking and doing. That's what you're really going for here. Your work should stand alone. A stranger should be able to pick up your paper and look at it and be like, oh yeah, she's got this. I know exactly what she did. Um, and that, that's the idea behind organizing our work so nicely. Okay guys, that kind of wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll probably do more on this in class, but it's always good to practice these fraction problems. See you later. Bye.